I started my life, my professional life as an engineer. I moved to be a consultant for organizations, usually the organizations that initially I worked for or with as an engineer. Um, and then became very curious about the psychology that didn't allow people to make the changes they knew they wanted for their organization. So I started taking classes in psychology and when I decided why not get a degree in psychology in my country of origin. I am originally from Caracas, Venezuela. To, to get a master's degree or a PhD on psychology, I had to start from zero, from being a, a junior, a freshman, to, to from zero, from the first year of education. And I already had a master's degree in electrical engineering, and I'm like, what? So um, instead, when I came to Boston, uh, you just register into a master's degree. I did it in master's in psychology and with a <laughs> engineering, electrical engineering degree and a master's in electrical engineering. But I did really well. And then for three years, I worked as a family therapist um, and then went for a PhD in psychology. And so now... Uh, something that I was doing, kind of ex ex experimenting with psychology in the projects I did for organizations years and years ago. Now I do it in a rigorous way because now I have a degree, two degrees in psychology, a master's in, in counseling psychology with, with a practice as a family therapist and, and then a PhD in cognitive science. And um, so what I have been doing is working with organizations uh, to help them, you know, improve performance, be agile, deliver on time, et cetera, manage change. But also in parallel, and for more than 20 years, I have been a mindfulness teacher. Uh, my last gig, my last job uh, as a mindfulness teacher started five years ago because there is a local hospital here in the Boston area called Beth Israel Lehi that is creating a center, a mind-body center. They call it a center for psychophysiological research, you know, the relationship between the psyche and the physiology. Mm -hmm. And so I've been working with them for five years, and they are doing research on the impact of meditation in different chronic conditions, such as asthma, chronic back pain, uh, long COVID now. Recently, I finished a class on long COVID with patients who complain of long COVID. So um, what happened two and a half years ago is that we went, we went going through COVID and I couldn't work because my work with organizations depend depends on me doing a lot of networking and going to a bunch of gatherings to to come you know to meet clients etc so i had a lot of time to to stop and think and among the things that i discovered was the work of john vervicki who in his video series gave me the vocabulary to explain what i have been doing for more than 20 years he gave me a vocabulary to explain what I have been doing. So I have been, to use these words, um, help, helping people transject, you know, like you, you, you have a frame, you understand a problem like this, or oh, this engineer is not productive, or, or this team has this, you know, you have a frame, a way of understanding the problem. So when, once you start using tools from psychology and also from, from, from change management, a discipline within a management science where you see how to change the way people perform, uh, you start like helping people dissolve their understanding of a particular issue and then create it anew. And then do it like this and do it like this. But what happens when you start doing that is that there is a moment that the person who is doing the framing and reframing and framing and reframing Suddenly, and this is the word that Vicky gave me, transject. They become something else. They transform. And so um, I was like, wow, this guy 
is bringing my two worlds together because my world of being an organizational consultant and my world of being a meditation teacher were fused by the concepts that Vervicki presents because he's both a psychologist, a cognitive scientist and philosopher who teaches at the University of Toronto and publishes, you know, beautiful, powerful, insightful papers that contribute to our understanding of ourselves. But he's also a meditation teacher. So it's just such a gift that I received when I found his work. And that's when I decided to start what I'm doing right now, the Wisdom Project. 